very much, uh, Senator. And um, thanks to all the nominees for being here today. Congratulations on your nominations. Ms. Morrison, if I could start with you. We've been talking, I think, today about a December 2019 article that you wrote, an opinion piece entitled, Prosecutors Can Write Past Wrongs If Only the System Lets Them. I assume you remember that piece just a couple of years ago. Uh, yes, I was a, a co-author of that piece. There. You, in that piece, you, you praised, and I'm quoting you now, a growing cohort of prosecutors seeking a new approach to justice. And then you go on to describe those prosecutors as seeking to, and I'm quoting you again, reform current tough on crime practices and still quoting you restore trust in the criminal legal system as a whole i want to talk to you about your view on tough on crime practices and why you're opposed to them just a few things to make sure that we're we're on a level set here are you familiar with with the fact that homicides were up 30 percent from 2020 to 2021 in this country the largest ever increase ever recorded in american history uh senator i i don't know that I can vouch for that precise statistic, but I am aware that uh, there are some studies showing that homicides are up uh, across the country. In 2020, St. Louis and my home state saw its highest murder rate in 50 years. Carjackings were up in D.C. to take another example from 142 in 2019 to 426 last year. Carjackings quadrupled in Philadelphia since 2015. In Chicago, they're up from 303 in 2014 to 1,800 last year. Uh, they're also uh, skyrocketing in St. Louis, St. Louis County, in St. Charles County, in my home state, all in the greater St. Louis area. And these are just a few, a few of the statistics that show the dramatic increase in crime, in violent crime, in assaults, all across this country. You praise in your piece where you decry a tough on crime practice, you praise someone, a, a prosecutor in my state in particular, St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner. Do you remember praising her in this piece? Um, thank you, Senator Hawley. Uh, yes, the focus of that piece and, and the specific uh, aspect of Ms. Gardner's work that we were discussing was her work on a murder case that long predated her tenure in which she uh, found evidence that the person was actually innocent and had gone to court to try to overturn that conviction. Well, you praise her as the St. Louis Circuit Attorney, so let's just talk a little bit about her record that, that you saw fit to praise. In 2020, in the midst of rioting that convulsed the city of St. Louis, police officers were shot at. A retired police captain, David Dorn, was murdered. Rioters threw rocks and gasoline and frozen water bottles at police officers. Firefighters were assaulted and blocked from responding to fires, fires that looters set across the city. Businesses were burned, their windows shattered. Innocent civilians were assaulted. The police, over the course of two nights of rioting, arrested 36 separate individuals. They sent them to the prosecutor's office, the one that you praise Kim Gardner as a model. And do you know how many of those 36 that she prosecuted? I do not, Senator. No, the answer is zero. She released all 36. I've got the news articles right here. Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner says that, in fact, she confirmed 36 people arrested Sunday and Monday night for rioting and looting have all been released from custody. What Kim Gardner did instead is blame the police. She said that the police were the ones at fault. The police hadn't given her the evidence. The police hadn't provided what she was seeking. This is her quote, we need essential evidence from the police. This despite the fact that the police confirmed they had brought these people who were arrested in the course of doing the things I just described, assaulting police officers, throwing rocks and gasoline and frozen water bottles, assaulting firefighters, burning businesses, and she didn't charge any, 36 people arrested, brought to her, evidence presented to her, and she releases them. Now, is that the kind of approach that you stand by and think is appropriate for prosecutors to take? Um, Senator Hawley, the focus of the piece uh, in which I mentioned Ms. Gardner that, that you're referencing was the case of a man named Lamar Johnson. And what I found um, particularly heartening about the events that took place after we wrote that essay is that the Missouri legislature uh, I believe Republican in both chambers who sponsored the bill, uh, changed the law so that Ms. Gardner could successfully file a motion for a new trial on behalf of the individual referenced. And we were joined uh, by the Cato Institute and others in supporting that bill. So I, I agree with you, there are many issues of, of great public debate about how we should best oppose crime and public safety. But in the particular case I was writing about, 
uh, it appeared to reflect a broader consensus about how to handle wrongful convictions. In but that, with all due respect, that's not how you describe her in this piece. You describe her as part of a cohort of prosecutors who seek a new approach to justice and in particular seek to reform current tough on crime practices. Now, I, I actually, I do agree with that characterization. I think you accurately have described the, the, the behavior of prosecutors in my state. They have reformed tough on crime practices. In fact, I'd say they're pro-crime. They're pro-criminal practices, and we're seeing the result of those in my state. And unfortunately, the result is people who are the most vulnerable, people who can't afford private security, people who aren't connected and wealthy, they're the ones who suffer. They're the ones whose children aren't safe. They're the ones whose cars are smashed. They're the ones whose businesses get looted. They're the ones whose neighborhoods you can't go out and walk on the street. And they're suffering right now in my state and all across this country because prosecutors won't do their job. You praise these prosecutors as, as a, taking a new approach, and I, I agree with you. It is a new approach, but it's a disastrous approach. And unfortunately, for that reason alone, I cannot support your nomination, and I will not support the nominations of judges or any other individuals sent to us by this administration who are soft on crime and soft on criminals. Frankly, it is a pattern with this administration, and it is one that has got to end. And for those reasons, I will oppose you and anybody else that the president sends up to us who does not understand the necessity of the rule of law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Senator Padilla. Uh, 